Alright, hello. Um, this is a video for my Stardew Valley late end, late game, end game, and post end game, I guess. Really, really end game. Um, so before I start this video, first off, I don't make videos very often. If this video is a bit shoddy, if the sound's not great, I apologize in advance for that. Uh, a couple disclaimers before I start. Um, I play this on PC. Uh, I do play with the Xbox controller. There are a few things that you can't do on the controller that you can do with the keyboard and the mouse, um, or some things that are easier on the keyboard and the mouse. I'll try to cover those if I can so that you guys know the differences. Um, just keep in mind that whenever you see my layouts for different things and everything, it's the easiest way for the controller that I've found, or as far as I know. So some of the stuff might not be packed as tightly, but it's because in this game you can't really reach diagonally on the controller unless you use the second joystick and it's really a hassle. Um, I believe I have a couple different save files that we're going to go through kind of showing my progress, um, but it's it's pretty much still just all in game. Um, I believe we start kind of at the end of year five. Um, I hit the 1.3 multiplayer update. This map is a multiplayer, but I got the secret notes and everything at year four, winter day three. Um, so that's when I hit 1.3. I wasn't able to get the notes or do the night market or anything like that before that point. Um, if I had, my save file might have been completed a bit earlier. Um, I don't use any mods. I haven't. Um, this is actually my only game file that I have. Um, I've just played on this file. I've never started another file or anything like that. Um, we'll be starting day 24 of fall year 5. Year 5 was the last year that I uh, kind of prioritized making money. After year 5, it's more just cosmetic and different changes. So we're starting here so that you can see what my farm was like at full production. And you can see the time stamp on the file there is about 167 hours. I'll try to show the load screen for each save file so that you can see the date, the amount of money, and the time put into the file before we enter it. Um, like I said, I haven't used any mods, any textures. I believe the title for this video will say something to the effect of 100% save file and then parentheses have a 99.99%. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over the things I don't have again before I start. Sorry, I know I have a bunch of disclaimers. I just want everybody to know what type of video it's going to be because it's probably going to be pretty long. Um, I have the stone owls that you can buy from the night market and decorate your farm with, but I don't have that super rare stone owl or the strange capsule, those super rare things that just never pop up. I've never run into them. Um, apparently there's a panda hat that isn't obtainable anyway, but I don't have it and it's on the wiki, so I'm including it in the list. Um, I don't have the Steam Joja warehouse achievement. Um, and that's because I did the community center, and like I said, I only have this one file. Um, I don't have either of the arcade achievements for beating Prairie King or whatever it is and beating it without dying, so I don't have those. I don't have the arcade machines for Junimo, Cart, or the Prairie thing, because again, I haven't beaten those. They're not that fun, and I don't really consider them part of the main game, so I didn't do them. I don't have the T set. Um, I tried hard for that, but that's just... You know, I've played that the save file for like 200 hours and I've only had like 8 chances or 7 chances to get it. And I just didn't, uh, in case you don't know, the tea set is a gift at the Feast of the Winter Star. It's completely random, you only get one chance a year if you even show up for that festival, which I show up for most of them, but I don't have that. I don't believe I've ever had a mushroom tree on my farm. I know at one point I found a stump and I wasn't sure what it was, but I don't remember ever seeing the full mushroom tree. Although, that doesn't really affect percentages or anything like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the file. Um, again, this is near the end of fall, year 5. Um, this is the last day, or the last week, that my farm is at full production. I didn't decorate much. Um, I focus more on that later in the game, as you'll see. So, right now, again, it's mostly functional. Uh, I always keep pepper poppers and coffee. Um, also, I'm going to try and include a bunch of kind of tips in this, in case you haven't noticed, if you look up here in the corner, you can see that I actually have two enhancers for speed. So, the way that food works, as far as I can tell, is that 
anything that's not speed, you can't have more than one of. So if I have a farming thing, like from the Pepper Poppers, and I eat something luck-based, that luck is going to cancel out the farming. But not only is it going to cancel out the farming, it's going to cancel the Pepper Poppers as a whole, and you'll lose the speed also. But if you eat something that gives you something and speed, and then you eat a coffee, which only provides speed, the speed will stack. So nothing else can stack, and you can't have more than one of more than one power unless you have something and speed. Luck, strength, mining, all of that other stuff will cancel it out. So you can stack coffee with pepper poppers, and you can also stack coffee with the spicy eel, which also gives you luck and speed. And if you stack the coffee with that, then you, you're also moving at two speed and you have the luck instead of the farming. Pepper poppers are easier to make, so I use them just for the speed. I don't really use the farming. Um, spicy eel is nice when you're mining, and if you use the coffee, you can mine really fast. Um, something to know about coffee is it actually speeds up your animations as well. So if you're at plus two speed, you can swing your pick a lot faster and different things like that. Um, I have the Statue of Perfection and one of the golden cat things, the leak. I guess it's George's birthday, I'm gonna guess. Am I right? I am right. Um, that's the other thing, well, I guess I'll show that more in the last file, but I have more, or max friendship with everyone except for my child achievement one and the other child achievement two. I think at the end of the save file they're both up to ten hearts though. I actually didn't plan on keeping them because they get in the way and they're like cats and stuff, but I needed the achievement. But it ended up being that by the time I got married and had the kids, I didn't have a bunch of stuff in my house, like furnaces and things, so they're not in the way, and I decided to keep them for now. Um, I have a bunch of items. I'm really only going to go through my chests on the final file so that you can see my final kind of inventory. Um, like I said, this is the farm kind of at max production. We're at 8.5 million gold right now. I believe I've bought everything in the game. You can see that I have the clock and both of the obelisks, and you can see I also have the return scepter, which are pretty much the most extravagant items in the game, included with the statue of endless fortune, I believe that one's called. Um, so this is the farm at full production. I grow ancient fruit for the entire year. I have five plots, each with eight 24 plots within them. Um, I found this layout. It was slightly different than this online. Um, it works really well. The Juno Mohot's Reach. These four scarecrows will cover all of them. Um, and they'll pick them for you on any days that it's not raining. I had a bunch of trees here for sap. Um, grow a lot of the... Uh, which ones are these? The oak trees. Because you need the oak resin for the cat or kegs which obviously are one of the best ways to make money is with ancient fruit and kegs making it into wine uh star fruit might sell a bit better but if you're just going to do a whole year you might as well just do the ancient fruits so you only have to plant once um another very nice thing about ancient fruit is that you cannot eat it and so whenever you're putting it into the kegs at least on controller because you can't really get your cursor on the side here or you can, but eventually it'll reset if you don't move it, like that. Um, so not being able to eat the ancient fruit keeps you from it asking that over and over while you're trying to empty them into the kegs. Again, I have a lot of these trees. This one is not supposed to be here. There we go. Drink another coffee. Um, these five barns all have kegs in them that are all filled with wine. Uh, I believe there's 960 ancient fruit plants here. So that's 960 ancient fruit a week, which also take about a week in the kegs. Um, I have five barns with 122 kegs each, and I actually also have ancient fruit in here along with more of these trees. You can pack a lot of these uh, normal trees in the greenhouse. I actually also had another row at the front here. I believe I have a screenshot of that that I'll show later. Um, these trees can be planted a lot closer together than the uh, fruit trees, and so it makes it to where you can kind of do this zigzag pattern along the side. Um, again, this is useful for that oak resin. You really need it to, as you can see, to make the kegs. 
iron bars, copper bars, and wood you can all buy. Uh, so if you have enough money, you can just buy those. Oak resin is not able to be purchased except maybe at the traveling cart. I've never seen it that I remember, but maybe it was there. I have these two barns filled with 122 crystallariums each, which are all producing diamonds. These sheds, I believe one of them has furnaces in them. No, did we move it already? Hmm. Oh, this is the shed with furnaces in them. Sorry, a lot of stuff has moved around since the final save file. Uh, those are a bunch of furnaces. These are like seed makers and other things. Um, but that's pretty much my farm at full production. Bunch of bunch of these oak trees especially to fill up all that stuff. I guess the last thing that I didn't show, those barns aren't actually enough kegs uh, to process all of these each week. I went ahead and filled up the quarry. This was the most efficient packing that I could find. There's a couple of things over here on the edge where I found a few extra spots. Um, let me see here. I guess if I do my math right, I know that I have 974 kegs total, and I know that there's 122 in each of the barns. One, two, three, four, five. So there's 364 kegs here in the quarry. Um, and I filled it up pretty much max, as far as I can tell. Um, I actually have 14 more kegs than I do plants. There's 960 plants and 974 kegs. But if you needed more, you could probably use some of the area over here. It'd still be pretty easy to get to. Uh, no one ever walks over here, so you don't have to worry about them getting blown up. I don't think anyone ever walks in or out of that building. Ever. It's a little suspicious if you ask me. So, I think that's most... Uh, I don't even know I'm walking back. I have a return scepter. Um, I believe that's most of this. Um, a tip, if you're going to plant ancient fruit like this, definitely buy the Deluxe Grow Fertilizer. It makes it to where plants grow 25% faster. These ancient fruit take 28 days to grow. And if you take off 25% of that, you're talking about 21 days instead of 28. Um, so you're getting a week there, which is kind of an extra harvest, but it's kind of not. Because you have to plant them the first day, and you can't really water them the first day, because you'll usually run out of time, especially if you have this many, basically what that week extra time buys you is that if it ever rains on a day when they're uh, ripe, and the Junimos won't pick them, instead of picking them all yourself so that you can get that extra harvest, you can just kind of not worry about it through the year, and if it rains, just don't worry about it, and it'll factor into that uh, fertilizer time. It would be really unlikely for, I mean, you only get, I mean, that's eight and then another one. Yeah, you really only get like eight harvests, so the chances of losing seven days to rain on that is pretty much non-existent, and that's what you're buying yourself with that fertilizer. Um, and, I mean, you can see that the fertilizer's there, which is kind of weird because I put the fertilizer there in spring, but I guess it works different with ancient fruit. Uh, it doesn't actually speed up the week-to-week -week growth or anything like that. Um, I believe the current um, profit yield from just 974, if I fill all the kegs, uh, is about two and a quarter million dollars per week. I believe I have a screenshot of selling 974 ancient fruit later um, that'll show the exact number. Um, other things on this file, I guess currently I have the kegs downstairs. Uh, I believe there's 116 of these. Um, I didn't really use them too much towards late game because money's already fairly obsolete. I have had eight and a half million dollars. I've earned 36 million to this point. Um, so yeah, that's most of the stuff at full production. I think I have a couple other tips. Um, something, if it does rain, uh, you might not believe it, but you can actually pick pretty much all five of these fields yourself and have time to put them in the kegs. Something you might not notice at first when it comes to picking fruit. I guess I'll go into the greenhouse to show you. I Pepper poppers and coffee wore off. Fun fact about pepper poppers is that if you eat one at 6 a.m., it'll last you till 4 p.m., and if you eat one at 4 p.m., it will last you till 2 a.m. So 
two of them will last you an entire day, and you can always supplement it with coffee. Pepper poppers, you can't really buy them. You get the recipe for chain. I believe you get six or seven hearts with him. They'll send it to you in the mail. Just takes uh, a cheese and a hot pepper. The hot peppers are like the ancient fruit. They regrow multiple times, and it only takes them three days to grow again. So if you have a few cows and some cheese machines and, you know, a couple garden pots inside, which um, I didn't use too much, but if you have some garden pots inside with the hot peppers, you can make a bunch of pepper poppers really easy, and it'll speed up everything that you do. Um, actually, kind of in different ways, as I'm kind of about to get into, but something you'll notice here, or that you might not have noticed, the most time that you would probably notice is not when you're on your farm, but when you're out and about. If you ever pick up a forageable and there's an NPC walking near you, they'll stop. And that's because while there is an animation for picking up the fruit, if you look at the timer over on the side while you're picking, you'll notice that it flashes kind of irregularly. If you pause the game, it'll flash, meaning that time is paused. And it's like that when you're in dialogue. Um, most things where time isn't passing, you'll see that the timer over there is flashing. Um, it's flashing irregularly here because the time in which you're picking the fruit is instant and time is paused, but that time before you pick up another one isn't, and so it kind of flashes a little irregularly there. But what this means is that you can actually pick a lot of fruit really fast. It takes you a while, like IRL in real life, but in the game it's not going to take you that much time at all. Um, something to notice that I said earlier is pepper poppers and coffee increase the speed of your animations. When you're mining, it saves you time in real life and in the game. But in this, whenever you're picking crops, since when you're picking them, the time is paused anyway during the animation, the coffee will not save you time in game, but it will save you time in real life. And that's the only discrepancy there. Anything else, it'll save you in both, but particularly for picking crops, um, the speed will help you in real life, but not in the game. So that's a bit of a quirk. I'm not entirely sure why it's like that. It's nice that you can pick fruit that fast. I guess he knows that in this game that the uh, you know growing the fruit is going to be the way main way to make money um so there's that um as i said earlier whenever you're putting things into the keg it's really nice with the ancient fruit because you can just slide along like this and even if you click a on a keg that you've already done which would normally make you eat what you're trying to eat the ancient fruit's not edible and so you can slide along like this and, you know, do it really well. Um, another thing to note is that if you are just taking wine out of a keg, or if you're just putting an ancient fruit in, you can stack the pepper poppers and the coffee and operate at two speed, two plus two speed doing that. But if you're doing this, where you're trying to take the wine out and put in an ancient fruit, if you eat just pepper poppers or just coffee, you're usually fine. If you eat both, he will tend to skip over some of the kegs. He'll usually take the wine out, but he won't put an ancient fruit in. So if you're collecting something from a furnace or putting something in a furnace or collecting something from a keg or putting something in a keg, you can stack the speed and you'll be fine. If you're taking out and putting in in the same go, you want to make sure that you're only using coffee or only using pepper poppers. Otherwise, you're likely to skip a few barrels. It won't be very many, but if you're like me and really need to fill every one, it is an extreme pain to get to the end of the quarry or at the end of a barn and try and figure out which keg that you didn't fill. And, you know, that's a bunch of extra money. And if you have the artisan skill, that's even 40% on top of it. It's just, you don't want to skip kegs. Um... Before I move on to my other save files, I'm going to try and look through my pro tips here and see if any of them are kind of specific to the farm being at max production. A um, couple things about mining. Different things like that. I guess the other thing to notice is that most of my stuff is stacked vertically. It is a lot easier in this game to get him to grind up or down walking like this. Things like this are extremely difficult. If you just walk across, he won't grab them. You kind of have to change your direction multiple times. Um, something that I believe is a bit new in 1.3 that maybe wasn't like that before, but I could be wrong, is that if the kegs are below you, 
and you walk a straight line across, he will pick them up, which might be a small case for putting them horizontally, but, you know, if you're going to double stack them the way that these are to fill in the space, half of them you'll be able to grab this easy way, but half of them on the bottom is going to be this kind of half circle motion over and over again. So again, I play on controller. This is the easiest thing I found is to always stack these things vertically. Um, I think that's most of the stuff. This save file is more or less complete. Um, you know, all of my skills are at 10. It's the farming's only like that because I have eaten the pepper poppers right now. My wallet is full. I have all the different items. Even if you can't access some of them with the controller, it kind of skips over the skull key and won't go to the bear thing. I can use the mouse to show them. Um, relationships are at max, the farm, the items. Uh, these are the list of items to be shipped, and I've shipped all of them. This is the all the fish in the game, including the new ones from the night market, and I have caught all of them. These are the artifacts, and I have all of them. I'll actually come back to these in a second and give you a bit more of a pro tip on those, especially if you're having trouble finding specific ones. These are the minerals from the mines. There's not really many much to say about those. You just find them in the mines and in geodes. No real secret there. Cooking, you got to be friends with everybody. There's a lot of recipes where you have to be friends with people, and that's the only way to get them. Always watch the cooking show. Please just always watch the cooking show. I missed an episode and had to wait two years to learn the recipe for, like, artichoke dip or something. It was terrible. It really sucked. And I mean, I would have gotten it eventually anyway, but it, always watch the cooking show. Always. Also, something about the cooking show. It comes on on Sundays and Wednesdays, and on Wednesdays it'll say rerun. But that does not mean that it's a rerun of Sunday. You don't get two chances to see it. The Sunday episode is scheduled. It will always be... There's two years of Sunday shows, and they cover all the, the different foods. The Wednesday, it's a rerun, but it's a random rerun. So if you miss one, you might end up getting it. I wasn't that lucky. But if, you're miss, if you missed one, always watch the show on Wednesday. Don't just think, oh, that was the episode that I already watched on Sunday, because... You might miss out. So that's a bit of a tip on the cooking. The other tip, again, is be friends with everyone. So they send you those recipes. Um, the achievements are all here, including the legend achievement that's normally hidden. It doesn't show up unless you actually achieve it. There's another achievement like that for beating Dawn of the Prairie King without dying. And like I said, I don't have that achievement. Uh, it doesn't show up here as empty because it's a secret one, but I don't have it and I have no plans on getting it. These are the secret notes. I accumulated these quite fast, honestly. Um, honestly, if you just go mining relatively often and hoe your fields up, you'll find all of them pretty quick. Uh, none of them are anything particularly too difficult. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, back to artifacts. So, a secret about artifacts. Not all of them can be found from artifact spots, but chances are, if you're missing a few, they're probably from artifact spots. I would recommend looking at the wiki. It will tell you which artifact spots, like some of them will appear artifact spots on the farm and on the railroad. Some of them will um, be in other places. Um, the biggest tip for that is to figure out which artifact you don't have. Figure out which, um, figure out which area of the map that it shows up in and the, there's two ways to approach it. The, the first one is to wait till winter. Winter, everything is covered with snow, and it makes it to where basically every spot is an opportunity for an artifact spot. This affects different places differently. Um, I guess I'll try to show you what I mean here really quick. Um, basically, the winter, it always... It almost always helps, but sometimes it doesn't. The, the trade-off with winter is that all of the ground is covered and becomes chances for an artifact spot, but at the same time, about 50% of those spots are going to be snow yams and the winter roots. So while there's more artifact spots, less of them are things that are good. So if it's an area like this, like the railroad, where most of the spots are already eligible for 
artifact spots, the snow's not going to add that many spots, and it's going to make a whole bunch of them snow yams and different things, and it's not going to help. So this area, it doesn't really help that much. But I guess I should take the horse. Where is it? It's over here. Um, but especially for the cinder sap forest, I mean, that's just a, a huge, huge increase. Uh, the only place, places in the cinder sap forest, which is this basically whole area, the secret woods do not count. Um, there's this area here, but all of this grass becomes eligible for artifact spots. But pretty much before that, there's that big patch at the top, and then there's some of these really small, irregularly shaped spots where some of them are these kind of gray rock things, which, oh, yeah, some of them are still eligible, but like that spot is never going to be an artifact spot because there's something there. So especially if you're missing something from here, uh, waking up every morning in the winter and searching the spots where you're eligible to find artifacts is a really good way to find them. I was missing four artifacts last winter, and I found three of them by searching everywhere that I needed to on the first, on basically every day of winter. Uh, that's the first approach you can, I mean, I guess the first approach is just looking every day. The second approach is trying in winter. The third approach could be called, not cheating, but an, it's, there's no mods, there's no glitches, there's no, it's all taking advantage of the way that, you know, the artifact spots already work, but if you have one that you're particularly trying to find, and that you really, you're kind of at your end's wit with, um, a secret about artifact spots is that if an artifact spot shows up, and you wake up that day, and you go mine it, it will be an item. Let's say it's three clay. If you load that same save file again, you wake up and you go back to that artifact spot, it will still be three clay. It will always be the same thing on the same day. Now, if an artifact spot, sorry, artifact spot is on the map and you do not mine it, the next day when the day changes, an artifact spot will either disappear or it will stay. If it disappears, it's gone forever. If it stays, it picks a new thing to be. It might still be the three clay, but this time it might be something different. So whenever you go mine it that day, you have a chance at something else. So the way that the exploit works is that if I know my artifact is in the cinder sap forest, I'll wake up, go through the forest, mine all the artifact spots, and see if I got what I needed. If I didn't, you reload the save file, and then you start your day, and you go through it like normal, ignoring all the artifact spots. Now, since none of them were what you needed, when the day ends, some of them will go away, but it won't matter because they weren't what you needed, and some of them will stay. And the ones that stay might be the chance to get what you are looking for. So basically, by not mining the ones that aren't what you're looking for, by using the save file exploit, you can stack the odds and make it a lot easier to find an artifact because, and like I said, at the beginning of that winter, I found three of the four and, you know, I had already played this game well over a hundred hours and it's just a 2% chance that you get it from an artifact spot. And for me, it's just a trade off of whether a game is fun or not anymore. And at that point, mining artifact spots after I'd already been doing it for half a year was just not fun anymore. And so I used the exploit and was able to find it within spring. It didn't take me more than a month. It didn't take me too long at all, to be honest, as far as I remember. Um, I actually did, at a later point, end up finding that artifact again by hoeing another artifact spot. So my final save file would have had it regardless, but especially if it's to the point where you're only missing one and it's just not fun anymore, you can just use that exploit and find it a lot quicker. It's a lot less time. It's a lot less frustrating and it's a lot, I mean, it's not necessarily more fun, but you're spending less time doing less fun stuff. So, in case you didn't know, that's another pro tip regarding the artifacts, because they can definitely be difficult. And there's an achievement for getting all of them, so you definitely want to do that. Um, so, that's pretty much everything on this save file. 
Uh, once I finished this harvest, I basically cleared my farm, and I can show you what that looks like. I did end up blowing up my Statue of Fortune and my uh, Statue of... Uh, Statue of Perfection and st uh, Statue of Endless Happiness. Whichever way it is, the... The one of happiness I had to sp <laughs> I had to spend another million gold on. There was no way to get that back. I didn't notice until a couple days after the save file and didn't want to redo it. If you do lose your Statue of Perfection, you can actually just come back over here and get it right back. Uh, you can't have more than one, unless maybe you find some glitch to exploit. I wouldn't know about that, but... Um, you can get it back for free. Statue of Endless Happiness or Fortune, that was gone. Um, I also have lightning rods up here. I believe this is pretty much as many lightning rods as you could ever need, and it's a pretty good place to put them because the space around the greenhouse is a bit of a dead space. Uh, if you have many more lightning rods than this, they're not all going to get struck. You'll just have a bunch of empty ones, so it's not worth it. Um... But yeah, I ended up clearing the farm. Actually, before I did all this, I had to pick up all the sprinklers and scarecrows and take the tappers off the trees so I wouldn't lose those, so it's a lot more tedious, but it's fun to blow everything up. Oh, man. Apparently, my computer can't quite keep up with it, at least not while recording. I'm not going to do all of it, but I still thought you guys would think that's pretty satisfying. But yeah, at this point, I pretty much just stopped focusing on money at all and went on to kind of decorate my farm, and that's what the next kind of save files are going to reflect. Uh, I believe the very next save file that I have is just a show of the end of winter of year 5. Um, basically, for that... None of the trees went down. Got to do something about that. Much better. Um, it basically, the next save file will be the last day of winter. And I will have basically gone through and collected all the extra items in my chests that I wanted to sell that are basically just extra. So I went through and found all those items, and I'm going to show you guys me selling them, and basically what the end of my year 5 profit is, since that's the last year that I focused on money. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording here, load on the other save file, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is the new save file. You can see it's day 28 of winter, year 5. Uh, I have about, looks like, 10 more hours of playtime on here than the last save, and about 5 million more gold. Um, again, the purpose of this file is just to show what it was, what my total money was at the end of the year. Um, I have a couple other things going on on my farm that I kind of don't want you guys to see yet. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in the screen a bit. Um... So, I believe... Yeah, I don't think the crystallariums or the... Yeah, there isn't anything ready today. So basically, I just have to sell what's in the chests um, that I have sitting by the thing, and then I guess I'll just go straight to bed and we can see what the total value is. Oh, there's 500 extra dollars. That helps. Um, I'm going to put away all my stuff in here. I know these I wasn't going to sell. Actually, none of that I'm going to sell. So, I'm going to go through these. It's just a bunch of random stuff. Uh, you know, there's kind of a couple stages in this game. The stage where you sell everything, the stage where you don't sell anything, and then the stage where now you have everything and you end up selling everything. Alright, should be this one, and then we should be done, I think. Because we already did that one, and that one, and that one's just my stuff. Whoops. There we go. I'm just going to go to bed real quick. I wonder what all that was worth. 
Oh, wow. Over half a million dollars. That's not bad. For five years of extra stuff. It's like 100k a year in surplus. Uh, so now if we look, we can see that I'm just shy of 44 million dollars. I'm gonna pull out my calculator here and see. 43,973,516 divided by five years is about 8.8 .8 million dollars a year on average. And actually, at the beginning of year five, I had only earned 19 and a half million. And so that means, like, I had only earned 19 and a half million total earnings at the beginning of year five, which means that this year I made about 24 and a half million dollars. So, if you want to know what five patches of ancient fruit turned into wine, and 244 diamonds a week, or a little more often than a week, depending on how much you sleep, will get you about $24.5 million in a year, if you commit to it. But that also involves finding 974 pine tar and making that many kegs. Um, so that was pretty much all I wanted to show with this file. Um, I believe the last file is just going to be the final result of my farm, um, and it'll include all the decorations, and I'll actually, on that file, go through all these chests and actually show you what's inside them. I just kind of want to show you the final result as opposed to doing it twice, once now and once later. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the other save file, and I'll be right back. Okay, so, whoops. Um, this is a save file that is actually showing year 6, fall 1. Something that I forgot to mention to you guys is that this cave, um, I chose the Bat Cave. If you can't tell why, it's because I'm wearing the Dark Knight shirt. And when Demetrius came to me and he was like, do you want a Bat Cave or a Mushroom Cave? I had to say Bat Cave. And then I found out how terrible it was. <laughs> and so, since the start of year 5, again right now I'm halfway through year 6, so a year and a half ago in-game, I decided to stop, I still checked the bat cave, but I wouldn't harvest anything from it. And a year and a half later, it finally resulted in a completely full bat cave. And the purpose of this save file is pretty much just to pick all of it and show you guys what it's worth. So that you can see just how pointless this thing is. Uh, in the 1.3 update, they allowed you to go back and change your masteries, or, you know, these little skill points here, by accessing that statue down by Krobus in the sewers, and that helped a lot, and made it to where I could reverse most of the bad decisions I've made, but unfortunately there is no way to undo this decision. And it sucks, because I would have totally taken the mushrooms over this. This is stuff that you find laying around or grown from a fruit tree anyway. There was also, I didn't notice this the first time, a hidden ap apricot? I, I don't know how to... I know how to say it, but people say it different ways. I'm going to say apricot. Uh, hiding right there. If it was anything else, you'd be able to see it. Um, but that's a full... Whatchamacallit. So I'm going to try and... Still got stuff I don't quite want you guys to see yet. Come over here to the shipping bin. Plums, pomegranates, cherries, spice berries. Oh, and you'll notice that the house is a bit decorated now. So a full bat cave, after a year and a half of waiting, yields in... Wow, $4,000. That's terrible. Alright, next save file will be my actual final farm, um, and I actually have a couple different versions of it because it looks different in different seasons, but the next one will be my very latest save file and it will be during spring. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and load that up and then I'll be right back. Alright, so this is my most current file. Um, it's spring, day 10 of spring, year 8. 
I didn't really do much in year seven. Um, it was mostly just going to sleep every day. I had a couple different things I was trying to do. Um, my farm, my final farm has a couple seasonal decorations on there that change every time. So right now I'm going to show you guys my most current year eight of spring. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like in summer, fall, and winter, but that will be from year seven. Uh, it'll look mostly the same. There may be a few small differences, but this is supposed to be the final definitive version. Uh, I just didn't want to sleep for another whole year to get more save files of the thing when it's more or less the same. Um, you can see my final time is about 216 hours. I currently have a bunch of money, but to be honest, like probably the last three quarters to last three quarters to a half a year, I haven't done any of my diamonds or anything like that. Um, appears to be raining today, so I'm not going to show you guys. I don't know why it's like that. I sh should have picked a sunny day. Although hopefully it will be tomorrow. I'm just going to go ahead, touch bases with the family. I have no idea what happened to the cat. He's supposed to be indoors somewhere, but it doesn't look like he is. Here we go. Um, I guess actually before I go show you the farm, I'll show you the house, which I mean, I kind of already walked around it, but there's Leah's area. Um, I have the bedroom. This chest doesn't really hold anything right now. I have the TV where I can access it, calendar. I have this nice artwork right here. Um, I believe that I have every unique piece of furniture and pretty much, you know, everything that you can't find in the furniture catalog or the furniture or the regular catalog um i believe i have all the items i believe i have them all placed um i'll try to point them out as we come across them these are garden pots uh sometimes i grow stuff indoors if i need some stuff uh it's not very often anymore but i didn't really know what else to put there i didn't really decorate the bedroom much uh, i decorated more the rest of the house um as you can probably see these are all the hats in the game minus the eye patch um, and also minus the blue and red cowboy hats. These are very difficult to find, as it turns out. The blue cowboy hat I actually found relatively quickly. The red cowboy hat I probably spent about three million dollars on mega bombs and energy tonics mining in the skull mines to find the stupid treasure levels. Um, I found five of these, or six of these, before I found the red one. Apparently the red one's rarer, or at least it was for me. Um, they can only be found in those treasure rooms in the Skull Cavern. Um, small tip for that. I wasn't sure at first whenever I started looking for them if you could um, fall down a shaft and land on a treasure level. I thought that you had to go down a ladder, but it turns out that if you take a shaft, you can fall onto a treasure level. So you don't really have to worry about that. If you see a shaft or ladder, you can just take it, and your chances are pretty much the same there. Um, the Easter Bunny is a unique decoration that you can get at the Egg Festival. Um, you can buy flamingos and the plush bunny. The plush bunny you can only buy one of a year. I believe I have three of them. I have a bunch of flamingos, but the plush bunny you can only buy once a year, so it's hard to get a lot of those. Uh, Iridium Fireplace you can really only buy at the night market. I have a couple extra. And then I have the furniture catalog. The dried sunflowers are from the Valley Fair, I believe. Um, I think it costs like 500 star points. I have one of them on a table over here somewhere. This is the living room. I put some modern benches, some rugs, the modern bookcases, and iridium fireplace. I like this rug as an opening rug. I have a bit of kitchen rug, another iridium fireplace. Uh, this is Leah's statue that she gives you from a heart event, I believe. And there's the other dried sunflowers that I have. Um, I didn't learn until pretty late in the game that these tables could hold regular everyday items. So whenever I decorated the rest of my farm, I didn't really put anything on these except for the things in the catalog. But I think it made it a bit more of a challenge to decorate things appropriately. Um, the, this room and the children's room have some of the unique paintings from the things. Um, a lot of them that you get from the night market or, well, mostly from the night market. Uh, the items on this table, everything in the top row is gold quality or it doesn't have a quality. Everything on the bottom is iridium quality or 
doesn't have a quality. Um, the things on the top are mostly just, I mean, you can see what they are. These weeds, I only have one of them. Apparently it's a glitch. You can get them from something to do with the mushroom tree. I'm not entirely sure. I've only found one the entire time I've played, so I decided to put it there. The treasure... I'm not entirely sure where you get that. I can't remember. Um, I have a dinosaur egg, iridium quality, a pearl that you can get from fishing at the night market. Uh, prismatic shard. I had already found the strange yellow and green dolls um, before. Uh, before the 1.3 update. And then on the 1.3 update... I know this one. And then I think it's this one. I don't know, some of the one, two of the ones with these X's on it are the green and yellow dolls. So since I had an extra one, I put them on here. This is Iridium Quality Ancient Wine, Iridium Quality Duck Feather and Rabbit's Foot, and one of those Golden Pumpkins from the Spirits Eve Festival. These are most of the food items that I have multiples of. Um, most of these you get as gifts, where you can buy them or different things is the only reason I have more than one. I also carry a stack of salads on me to give to Leia because she loves that shit. These are all the chests that I have for all the various things in the game. I'm going to go through all of them. There will definitely be different timestamps and things in the description to skip over all of this crap. Um, if you're interested in seeing what I've accumulated over these eight years, then, I mean, it is something to see. Pretty much everything on that half is just decorations, and it goes through pretty quickly. They're all filled with the same thing. These are a bit more specialized and have a random assortment. So this is just kind of my main chest. Um, I have enough ancient seeds to go back into max production if I want, along with enough sprinklers and different things like that. I like to keep grass starter on hand, just because. Not sure why the heater's here. I guess I'm just not using it. This is minerals, different things. You can notice I have a lot of refined quartz. Something about refined quartz that you may not know if you need a lot of it for crystal paths or flower pots or anything else. You can use quartz in a crystallarium and you'll get about three quartz a day from that and then you can smelt them but what's smarter to do is to put a fire quartz in your crystallarium it'll still only make one a day as opposed to three but when you smelt it you'll get three refined quartz so you still get three refined quartz but instead of checking it three times a day you only have to check it once and since it's one thing that gives you three you'll use a third of the amount of coal and that way you can get a bunch of refined quartz by using the crystallariums with fire quartz and smelting it with just a single coal. It's a lot more efficient than either mining or using crystallariums on quartz. Um, most of the elements, I, or most of these minerals, I don't have too many of because you can duplicate them. Um, I have a bunch of aquamarine and marble because you use it to build this marble brazier. It's the only one that kind of requires those. It's Something that I kind of wish I had known earlier, and I would have saved those instead of selling them, but once you have a crystallarium, you can make as many of them as you want. I have enough diamonds to fill both those barns, which are still outside with the crystallariums in them. Um, it's pretty much that for that chest. This is just a nature chest with a whole bunch of sapwood and stone and hardwood and fiber and clay and algae, as you can see. Bunch of fish. Some more kind of fish, but also things that you find in crab pots and seaweed and things that you find laying on the beach. This is kind of a forgeable thing that aren't the seasonal forageables, like that they can't be grown with the, uh, the seeds that you craft, the seasonal seeds, and some more fish that just kind of didn't fit in the other thing. These are flowers, fair amount of those. These are monster parts fair amount of those. Uh, this is my seed vault. I have all the regular crops, uh, including the rare seeds, and then I also have the more irregular seeds, seasonal seeds, flower seeds, tree seeds, grass starter mix seeds, all of that stuff. These are cooked items that I really only have one for because I had to cook every item in the game to get the achievement. So it's just pretty much anything that I didn't have multiple of, I didn't end up putting in the fridge, and I just stored down here in a chest. And I'm sure it's all spoiled by now, because it's been sitting down here for like three years. These are spring and summer forageables. Fall and winter. Fruits. Vegetables. 
animal items, lots of rabbit feet and duck feathers, and dinosaur eggs. If you ever find a dinosaur egg, please do not give it to the museum. Hatch it into a dinosaur, let him lay you another egg, and give that one to Gunther, or whatever his name is. Do not... Do not go and put your first dinosaur egg in the museum. It is so hard to find them. If you need a tip on how to find the dinosaur egg, do not use artifact spots. Go fishing. Use a treasure tackle. Change your fishing mastery to the treasure hunter if you have to. Stack on every treasure buff you can get and just continually go fishing for a few days and you'll find one. Do not look in the mine or at artifact spots. You will not find one. And when you find it, do not give it to Gunter. This is a kind of artisan goods chest, but there's also like kind of store-bought stuff and I don't know, just a random assortment of different things, but mostly artisan goods. This is a chest for my chests, very useful. These are different weapons and rings and, you know, I'm not sure why the copper pan's in there. I don't use it. I've literally never used it once. I don't really use the sling sl slingshots. I don't know how good they are. Um, never really used the galaxy hammer or dagger, but I bought them anyway. These are different pathings and fences. Uh, I skipped this one. This is fishing stuff. Uh, magnet bait. That's what you need. Helps you find treasure, for sure. This is a scarecrow chest. This is a seed maker, and these are materials to make garden pots. I set aside these material for the garden pots long before I realized that sprinklers do not work on them. So I didn't end up making all 600 of them. <laughs> but I did make a fair amount. These are other just kind of, you know, crafting machines that you make. I don't want that. I'll organize it. There we go. Um... These are all the casks that were in the basement. These are some tappers casks. Um, these are all the auto grabbers that I found looking for those stupid cowboy hats. Apparently they're relatively plentiful down there compared to the hats. Um, these are all those tappers that were on those endless piles of maple trees. Or oak trees rather. These are some stumpers ears that I didn't end up using. Um, these entire half of chests are decorations. These decorations fall under... Basically, there's decorations and there's furniture. And they kind of behave diff differently. So I'm just going to do a quick pro tip here. I have to go grab some furniture real quick first, though. Um, for our purposes, the iridium fireplace will work. So, this is a basic log, and you can see that it does not say furniture. This one says furniture. Now, what this means is that either one of these can be placed indoors. But if you're going to try and place something outdoors, if it is a piece of furniture, you cannot place it. So, if it's one of these, you can. Now, another way to tell these apart is that if, it, if you come to one of these items, like the basic log, and you press X, it makes that kind of clunking sound. If you press it enough, it'll come up. That's how you can tell that it's a decoration and not a piece of furniture. If you come up to a piece of furniture and you press the button X, it'll pick up automatically. So you can look at the thing, and if it says furniture, it's furniture. Also, if you pick it up immediately, then it's a piece of furniture. These things can be placed anywhere on the map. They can be placed in your house, they can be placed on your farm, in the forest, in other people's houses, in the community center, anywhere you want. Anything that's a piece of furniture can be placed in your house or in a shed that is on your farm. No other indoors. You can't place these things inside Marnie's or in the community centers or anything like that. If you want to place decorations outdoors, they cannot be pieces of furniture. Now, this kind of makes it a bit difficult to decorate things that aren't your house because, as you can see, well... As you can see, anything that you get in this entire furniture catalog is furniture. And anything that you can get from this catalog is wallpaper or flooring, which, like furniture, can only be placed in your house or in sheds. So, there are a number of different decorations that are not furniture, and those of what I've kind of stocked up here.
some of them are available to buy all the time, but some of them can only be bought at certain occasions. Uh, if it's something that can only be bought on a certain occasion, I believe I have two chests worth of it. If it's something that you can buy all the time, I believe I have one. These are a basic log. You can buy them at uh, Robin's shop, I believe. I believe there is a glitch right now. Um, whenever you go to the shop, there's a couple different things that you can buy from her. I believe you can also buy these log sections. The log sections, you can buy as many as you want. But whenever you try to buy a basic log, you buy one of them, and it disappears off of her store page. If you back out and talk to her again, it'll show back up. So you can buy infinite of them, but for some reason, it'll only sell you one at a time. The only other thing that I know that functions like this is the plush bunny at the festival, but if you buy it and back out and go back in, it won't come back. You can really only buy one of them. The basic log, you can buy multiple of if you're patient. Um, again, not sure why it's like that. It's the only decorative piece uh, that follows that rule. It's very strange, but don't get discouraged. You can buy more than one. That being said, it is one of the worst decorations. Uh, you really might as well use a fence post, I guess. Probably looks better and kind of connects with each other. I guess you could make a fence out of these if you wanted. Um, I guess that would be the main thing to do. These are the log sections. These are infinitely valuable. They are the only thing that you can really place outside that functions as a bench. Uh, it really sucks. None of the benches that are furniture or couches or chairs or any of that can be placed outside. So log sections are really good for decorating, especially if you need benches or different things like that. Uh, these are hay bales. You can buy them at Marnie's. Not really anything special. These are stone things that you can buy from the dwarf. Um, they kind of look like stone turds, to be honest. Not a huge fan of them. You can buy these sign of the vessel from Krobus. Uh, not a huge fan of how they look. They're not terrible, but not a huge fan. The rest of these are things that you can only buy on certain occasions. The lawn flamingo, like I said, you can buy at the egg festival. This is another chest, mostly. Um, I didn't get to fill it all up. Um, did I already pass up the egg festival? Was that today? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I don't need any more of them. These are the tub of flowers. Um, I'm a bit mixed on this. Uh, it's kind of stupid. You can put them outdoors, but they look like this during spring and summer. But during fall and winter, they just look like these empty barrels. And it's very ugly. Um kind of sucks, especially if you're looking for year-round decoration, but that's what these are for. So there's seasonal decor, which I have two of, and then there's seasonal plants. Now, there's six different kinds of seasonal plants. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then there's the seasonal decor. All of them are decorations. All of them can be placed anywhere. All four of them will look different depending on the season. Um, all four of them have four different ways that they look in each season. Uh, I don't know why one of them is called seasonal decor and the others are called seasonal plants. All seven of them are the same thing as far as I can tell. Um, they're one of the most useful decorations, especially because it changes the way that your farm looks season to season. Um, they're very, very valuable for decorating them. All of them can be bought at the night market. As a matter of fact, most of these can be bought at the night market. Um, the flamingos are at the festival, the egg festival. Tub of flowers is at the flower festival. All these seasonal plants, I believe, can be sold at the flower dance, but they are sold at the night market. Um, the next thing are the large red candy canes and large green ones. Those are purchasable at the winter market. The small red, the small green, and the small mixed candy canes, those are at the night market. Wicked statue can be crafted for 25 stone and 5 coal. The suits of armor can be bought at the night market. Gravestones can be bought at Spirits Eve Festival or the night market. The stone frogs, the stone owls, again, these are not the stone owls that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. There's a silverish stone owl that's an extremely rare event. That's not what these are. These are purchasable at the night market. And parrots, stone parrots are purchasable at the night market. And I have two sets of each of those just because you have to buy them at certain times of the year, and I like to have an excess. This chest has nothing in it. Those are, like I said, what I hid or what I 
put on the tables and everything. Um, so now I'm pretty much ready to show you guys the actual farm with all the decorations and everything. Sorry that it's been a long wait. I know this video is probably closing in on an hour. Uh, if you kind of skip to this point from the beginning, no problems with that. I hope you enjoy the farm thing. Uh, I might be dropping a few more pro tips here, but if you like this part, please consider going back and watching the rest of the video. There's a lot of good information, and, um, you know, chances are you'll enjoy it. So it says it's going to be sunny tomorrow, so I'm just going to go ahead and bed so that I have a whole day to show you the farm without it getting dark. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat my pepper poppers and my coffee. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just zoom out as much as I can so that you guys can... Don't try and zoom out while you're eating something or while you're holding something you can eat. I think this is good enough. Um, so yeah, as I've pretty much already shown you the house, so we're just going to go outside. And... This is pretty much the new farm now. The top is mostly functional. I kind of have this uh, path where I've kind of, you know, uniformed it and made sure that there's not grass growing everywhere. I kept this kind of grassy area a bit around my house. You can still walk around the back of it. Um, my horse is wearing the top hat. You may have noticed that hat was missing from the chest. Uh, it's because he's wearing it. Um, I have my Junimo huts that I had just kind of sitting here. I have the golden clock up here next to the cat. The four farm warp to totem is a bit blocked. These are the two uh, barns that had the crystallariums in there. I also have an indicator crystallarium out here. It's kind of useful. Basically, it's the same as the ones inside. That way you can tell if it's ready without actually entering the barn. It saves you a bit of time. All my lightning rods are still here. The fruit cave is useless as usual. Um, I have my five barns over here that still have the kegs in them. Uh, again, all of this is paved up. Um, I moved the furnace shed over here, and I have 500 coal sitting nearby it in case I need to smelt stuff. The greenhouse is still filled with ancient fruit. I got rid of all the trees. There's 116 ancient fruit, which I use to fill this barn, at least when I'm doing production, which I haven't, again, in quite a while. And that's most the functional part. The rest of it I have made recreational. Um, I have it divi divided into five different sections. This is the middle section. These are some of the nine rarest kind of statues in the game. Not going to go over each one of them. Um, you can just kind of look them up individually. This center area is just kind of a festive area. No real particular theme. Um, I like the crystal pathways. I checkered the wooden stone flooring across these kind of six different sections. Um, the center here, again, has the center thing and then eight different statues, and each of those statues kind of starts a path. So there's eight different paths leading out from here. I guess nine if you count the one to the shed. Um, one of them comes up this way and goes here, and one of them, you know, it's kind of mirrored on both sides. This is another one of the paths that leads to this section. There's another path kind of perpendicular to that one that leads over to a different section. Each shed, or each section has a shed that's kind of themed and decorated. Um, each of these paths kind of has two loops, two extra loops that you can walk on if you want to, but you don't have to. So you can take the scenic route if you want to. Um, again, it's kind of just mirrored on both sides. These are the seasonal decor, not the plants, just the one that's actually called seasonal decor. Uh, these are arranged in a bit of a heart shape, kind of did that on purpose. Uh, the flamingos up here kind of make a star shape, that wasn't really intentional. These are the two plush bunnies, I've only got three total, the other one you saw in the thing. Um, I kind of wish that you could get more of those without, you know, hacking them or anything. The grass kind of divides the different sections from each other a bit, and kind of keeps it colorful. Um, I didn't really use any of the small candy canes, they just didn't really look right, and I liked leaving gaps to still make sure that you can kind of, you know, for instance, if you want to walk here and just go straight down, like, even though it's not on the path, you can still kind of do it. Um, so this is the biggest section. Um, I guess I'll show you the two smaller sections. Well, no, I should show you the shed first for the festive 
one. Um, this bear statue, I believe, is unique, but it's a piece of furniture. It can't be placed outdoors. Same thing with this metal chair and the Junimo plush and that blue bear. The small bear sitting on this table is just something from the furniture catalog. If I had the tea set, this is where it would be sitting. Um, but unfortunately, I don't. There's some unique paintings on the wall. Not of, all of those are unique. Some of them are just ones that you get from the catalog, but I thought they filled the room pretty well. Uh, that chicken statue is also unique, as far as I know. I use the golden braziers in here, uh, although outside I use the lamp posts. Since this is the biggest section, the lamp posts will light up a lot further of an area than any of the other braziers that you can build. All these things down here, um, you can see that the lamp posts give you good amount of light. Everything else says moderate, and it you can really tell. Um, so the next smallest section, is, or the two smaller sections, well, this is the smallest one, is the beach area. Um, I put this gravel kind of flooring here. Uh, inside, it's, you know, what you'd expect. Beach-themed, cactuses, campfires, sunsets, totem poles, all that stuff. Um, it's outdoor area is very small because couldn't really think of anything to put there, to be honest. That kind of is what dis determined the size of these different areas is pretty much how much could I think to put there. This is the kind of water uh, section. It's a bit of a park. There's those stepping stones like you might expect near a lake. There's the little pond right here for fishing. These are the log sections that I talked about. They make nice benches where you could sit, theoretically, if you could sit in this game. I use the aquamarine um, and marble braziers for this. They fit the theme well. I also use them indoors here. Uh, these are items just that you can get from the furniture catalog. I kind of thought they looked kind of watery. There's not a lot in this shed. It's kind of hard to find water-themed stuff. It's probably the most scarce out of them. I really like that picture, though. Um, I believe you get it from the night market. Uh, I really like the wall, or the flooring, too. You can see the waves and different things. Um... So those are three of the sections. I guess I'll show this section next. This is my favorite section. It's just kind of the dark section. And it's just this kind of labyrinth made by the various different stone statues, mainly the frog, owl, parrot, the suit of armor, and the wicked statue. There's also these skull braziers to light it. And there's also a couple of gravestones scattered around. Um, what you'll actually notice about the gravestones is that each of them you run into it at a dead end. So this is a dead end, and you'll see the gravestone. There's another dead end, another dead end, another dead end, and they just all kind of end with the gravestone. So I put the gravestones there first, um, and then I put the braziers to make sure that everything was lit, and then I went ahead and got a bunch of, I believe, 38 of each of these five different other statues and placed them randomly. They're not totally random. I tried to make sure that None of them were only one space apart, so that you can see these two wicked statues. There's two spaces between them. You kind of have to make a knight's move from chess. I'm pretty much 100% sure that none of them are within two spaces of each other. I've walked this maze way more than I should have, uh, and I, I'm really pretty sure that it's about as random as you can get. There's a number of different exits here. Um, you can see that this stone path kind of surrounds the whole thing, um, all five sections. And you can kind of leave one section and go into another. This is the second biggest section, although it's probably maybe... No, it's probably still smaller than the Sinnoh section. Um, it's just kind of the nature section. I have this kind of park area over here surrounding the lake. Um, we've got some of the regular trees in each corner, except for this kind of bottom corner, because they would you wouldn't be able to see these benches here. Um, we use the stump braziers for these and the wooden walkway or the, you know, this for the walkway. The trees, I tried filling in this wooden area with grass. It really didn't look good, and so I put this solid wood flooring. I really like the way it looks, actually. Um, there's beehives at the top and the bottom. Those produce, you know, all month or summer, winter. No, <laughs> spring, summer, and winter. And then I have the top four trees here are all the spring trees, and then these the second row are the summer trees, and the bottom row is the winter tree or the fall trees. 
Um, I kind of made it to where you can kind of walk a single path across it. And what you'll notice is that these plants right here are the seasonal plant number six. Um, they look different depending on the season. Um, and like I said, these trees, you know, grow during the different seasons and give the fruits. Um, this is just a small area where I have four small patches of crops. Each season I just kind of go to Pierre's and plant some random stuff and let it grow just so that the space looks full. These are the eight rare crows from around the game. Um, not going to go over where you get all eight. You could look that up, but I have all eight of them. I also have just some regular scarecrows here because there was another patch. Um, and then inside this one, we have kind of a nature, kind of zen thing. We got a bunch of flowers here. There's a single rare gem berry. There's some kind of tall plants checkered a bit there against the wall. Um, use the stump braziers in here too. These bamboo, bamboo mats look really nice. Um, the stone slab, I really wish that I could use that outside. It makes a really good bench. Um, I strongly considered trying to find a mod where you can place furniture outside, but I decided to try and do this all within the game limits. So those are the five sections. That's pretty much my whole farm. Um, like I said, this is basically done. This is post post end game. This is I've literally nothing else to do. Um, like I said, all my skills are up, my wallet's full, everyone's friendship is at 10, including Achievement 1 and Achievement 2. Um, I've crafted every item, all these pages are all full. Um, showed you guys my inventory earlier, you can see that I pretty much have at least 10 of basically every item in the game. I have the gold clock, I have the return scepter, I have the two beach and forest obelisks. Um, I have 23 and a half million dollars, then 60 million total on this save file. Um, all the best weapons, all the best tools. I guess I didn't show you guys this chest. Um, pumpkin seeds because I was maybe going to try and make some jack-o'-lanterns, but those seem to go bad at certain times of the year, so they're not a very reliable lighting source. Pepper seeds, in case I need pepper poppers, because I use them all the time. Some speed grow, bunch of bombs, lots of spicy eel and lucky lunch. Those are really good for going mining, definitely. Energy tonics, you know, just because. Ton of coffee because, and I don't really use the watering can or scythe much anymore. And... That's pretty much my save file. Um, I have one more save file, or I guess I have a couple more where I'm going to run through the farm, just kind of showing you guys the different sections and what they look like in different seasons real quick. So we'll do fall, or no, sorry, summer, fall, and winter. Um, I have another save file that kind of shows what that maze looks like without the statues, so I'll probably go ahead and show that real quick as well. And then I have a few screenshots from the game that are all just kind of... I don't know, it's just a random bunch. I'll probably show them and maybe talk about them a little bit. It won't be very many of those. Um, but this could mostly be considered the main part of the video. Again, it's nice to see how all this looks in different seasons. It's not much different, but it is kind of something else. So if you want to stick around for that. Um, I'll also probably, at the end of the video, I have a list of pro tips written down, and I've gone over most of them, but any that I haven't, I'll kind of post an information dump at the end of the video for that. Hopefully there's a bunch of timestamps in the description. This video is probably over an hour long, but hopefully you'll be able to click to and get to everything that you want pretty easily. Um, before I exit this save file, I'm just going to try and see if there's anything that I did not mention. Um, I showed you guys all my inventory. I showed you guys all my functional stuff here at the top. I showed you guys my whole kind of thing down here at the bottom. I debated decorating the community center, but it's kind of difficult not being able to put furniture or wallpaper in there, so I didn't really do it. Um, you could decorate it with pretty much any of these things that you see here, but um, people do go in there occasionally and you might get your stuff destroyed. And especially concerning some of these items that you only get once, I don't want to risk that, so I definitely use most of my farm is a safe space and didn't really place anything anywhere else. Um, I'm sure you could probably place some stuff in the quarry and get a similar achieve, uh, similar effect if you didn't actually want to use your farm to make a different kind of getaway or something like that, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything on here. I'm going to load up some of the other save files and go through those real quick. And um, yeah, stick around for the pro tip dump at the end and some of those screenshots maybe. Alright, so we're back again. Um, like I said, this is summer, but it's actually of year 7. So this is this save file was made before the other one. That's why the playtime is less and the money is less and everything like that. There will be a few differences. There was a couple things, like you may notice the floor in this room. I'm not entirely sure how that got changed. It's supposed to be the same as this. So there's a couple things outside that won't look quite right. The version that you just saw is the final version. So, um... More or less looks the same in the summer. All the grass stays the same color. And the main thing that is going to change is going to be the seasonal decor over here. I really like how these look. Um, and then the other difference in summer is going to be that these used to be yellow in spring and now they're blue. Uh, the peaches and oranges are in season now. And the four random crops that I planted are now the summer crops. Um... Everything inside of the shade or the sheds is the same. Uh, everything up here is the same. You know, I still got the you know ancient fruit and all that production stuff is the same. Um, but yeah, there's a couple differences. I think right here, I didn't notice that uh, this spot is supposed to be flooring. So that's like one of the things I didn't catch until a bit later. I think there's also there might be a couple of these statues that are messed up. But those are the main differences, are the summer, the, the seasonal decor over there, and the seasonal plant over here that changed, and then the different trees and things are in season. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to fall. That's a bit more interesting, and then I'll be right back. Alright, so this is day 12 of fall. This is still year 7, so it's further along than that summer file, but still not cut up to that spring one. Um... Again, the house floor is wrong. Um, now the grass has changed to that yellow-orange. Um, kind of mixed on how I feel about it. It works better in some areas than it does in others. Not really anything I can do about that. Uh, the seasonal decor are now sunflowers. I think that looks really nice. Um, the seasonal flower number six over here, seasonal plant six, there are now some red mushrooms. The fall uh, plants are now in the fall trees are now in season uh, the grass around here is you know also brown and then again I have changed the crops up here We've got armorath cranberries yams and pumpkins um, and again everything else is the same now we're gonna go ahead and load up winter and then we'll be right back all right so this is day two of winter it's a lot earlier in winter than the other seasons, because I didn't have to wait for those random crops that I plant to grow. So this is pretty much just a month before that spring file that I showed you. Um, there's no grass. Uh, it kind of makes it a bit more open. It looks a little cleaner. I kind of like the way it looks in winter. We get the snowmen, which is, you know, just awesome. Um, down here we get the kind of winter trees. None of the trees are in season, and, you know, obviously none of these are. I suppose I could plant winter seeds, but I kind of like the clean look without the grass or crops. Um, the maze looks pretty nice. Uh, kind of feels like the white contrasts with the dark of all the uh, statues. Might actually look really nice if I took out all the flooring, but I'm not about to do that, because that'll take forever. Um... So yeah, that's what it looks like in winter. Um, that's pretty much what it looks like year-round now. Uh, I have one more save file that I'm going to load that's going to show you what that maze looks like in winter without any of the statues around. But after that, it'll probably be the pretty much the end of the video. I'll probably just go through and see if I have any extra tips left on how to do something. Alright. Um, hmm... I'm not sure what the date on this file is. It's winter 15 of... I'm not sure which year. But this is what the maze looks like whenever I started it. Um, you can see that the gravestones are placed at all the dead ends, like I mentioned earlier. 
These are kind of tucked in little crevices and stuff, pretty much wherever I could get it to just cover the whole section, because I wanted the whole thing to be visible at night. Um, this whole video, I have been rearing the Iridium Band, but even if I wasn't, and it was the middle of the night, pretty much all of these sections would still be open. Um, these are the chests showing the uh, different statues that I still have to fill up the thing. So, yeah. Let's you see the, the maze a bit more clearly. I'm actually pretty happy with this maze. It fills up a lot of the space really well, and you pretty much have to take the long way to get to anywhere that you're trying to go. Uh, there's kind of a straight kind of across here. Um, this goes to a dead end. You gotta zigzag your way this way. That's a dead end. That's a dead end. And then you can kind of snake your way for that entrance. Or you come over here and this is a dead end. This is just four dead ends and they occupy a bunch of the middle space. Um, and then you gotta kind of, you know, work your way. You really have to zigzag a bunch to get anywhere that you're trying to go. And I like that about it. It's not so straightforward which way you have to go or anything like that. So that's pretty much it. Um, let me scroll through these pro tips right now and see if there's anything I haven't mentioned. Um, there'll probably be some screenshots after this. Um, I'm also going to try and timestamp everything. Hopefully it'll make everything easier to see, or hopefully you can just click on the parts that you want without having to watch the whole thing. Um, those are the things I don't have. Picking fruit. Um, I was just going to mention that this parry... Um, I didn't use it very much, I didn't really understand why you would want to, but it actually comes in a lot handy. Comes in a lot handy. Comes in really handy when you're mining. Basically, if you're running from a monster and it's behind you, and you don't have enough time to turn around and swing, or you don't think you can without getting hit, if you parry, anything that attacks you, whether it's in front or behind you, will get kind of deflected. And it'll give you time to turn around and do that, especially since the 1.3 update, the mine is a lot more brutal, and I found myself using the parry a lot more now, it's extremely useful. Um, use a bunch of bombs when you're mining. Um, in terms of food, spicy eel and lucky lunch are what you want for mining, coffee and pepper poppers is what you want for productivity, and omelets are what you want to eat for energy. Omelets, you can get the recipe from Gus really early on, and it takes any milk and any egg, and it'll make an omelet, and I believe it restores 40 health. I guess I could... do we still have any? Yeah. 100 energy and 40 health. And you can make a lot of those and carry a lot of them. You can pretty much, if you have four cows and four chickens, that's four omelets a day, uh, which you really shouldn't need. But those are the different foods that you should kind of... Maximize, um, already went over a bunch of the kegs and furnaces and different things like that. Um, went over most of the decoration tips. Again, pretty much all that stuff you can find at the winter market, but if you look it up on the wiki, you'll be able to tell. Um, if you're planning on buying a bunch of this stuff from the winter market in bulk, having the return scepter saves a lot of time, or you can pay the guy there $250 to teleport you. Having the beach, to or beach obelisk helps a lot too. You can travel back and forth and just buy a ton of items at once. Um, like I said, besides your house, the sheds are the only place you can place furniture and wallpaper and stuff, so if you're trying to decorate different things like this, don't put a bunch of barns everywhere, because you can't decorate them, except with the outside stuff. Um, went over all that stuff. Uh, another pro tip, in terms of moving buildings, um, you know, if you have this, if you have the mountain obelisk, and Robin happens to be open, you can reach her really quickly and move your buildings around. But if she doesn't happen to be open, the wizard's tower is actually open much wider hours. And once you hit that friendship level with him to where he unlocks that thing where you can buy the obelisk and the clock and everything, you can use that to move your buildings. And you can move not only the buildings that you buy from him, but the buildings that you buy from Robin as well. And vice versa also applies. You can move the wizard towers if you go to Robin. So for me, since I have this obelisk, I'll go to Robin because it's a lot closer. But if she's not going to be open, you can go down to the wizard and it's a lot faster. Um, those are pretty much all the tips that I have written down, so that should be everything. 
Um, I know this video is really long. Hopefully the timestamps made it easier to find what you were looking for. And if you did watch the whole thing, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I made this video because I didn't see a lot of in-game Stardew Valley files that didn't use a bunch of mods or textures. And like I look them up and they look cool, but I can't relate to them because it's not the vanilla game that I played. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I made a video that shows you know everything that you can do within the vanilla bounds. And... Uh, you know, just kind of show the potential that, you know, your farm has for other things than just planting stuff. There's a fair amount of things that you can put. These two statues are missing because they're inside. Uh, I don't want to come out here and harvest them every day, so I really only put them out there when I'm showing the farm off. So, that's everything. Um, there might be a little section on here with some extra screenshots showing some of the other stuff that I was talking about. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like it if you liked it. You can subscribe if you want. I don't post stuff very often. But you can if you want. Um, definitely share this with other people. If you have a bunch of people you know that play Stardew Valley and you think it's something that they'd like to see. Uh, I mean, that's part of the reason is I made it for me. But the other reason was to show other people. So if you know anybody that might enjoy it, please share it with them too. I'm sure they'll hopefully enjoy it as much as you did. Um... That's pretty much everything. Thanks for watching. Alright, so <laughs> very early on in the game, I found a doppelganger. <laughs> and I totally didn't know what Sebastian looked like before I started playing, but if I hadn't married Leia, I'd probably go for him. Here, I didn't really get a choice to explore the, the mining floor or grab that frozen tier. I literally had to go straight down. That's the two and a quarter million dollars that you get from 974 ancient fruit wine. That's what my greenhouse looked like when it was completely full of pine trees. Uh, this is the Feast of the Winter Star, and my secret person that I was supposed to give my gift to was Jazz. And I literally looked all over for her for like five minutes. She's sitting right there under the tree with a bow on her head. Like, how am I supposed to see that? It's just not right. This is a meteor that fell in the middle of my thing and thankfully only destroyed a couple pieces of flooring. I did not put him there. I don't know how that happened, but he got out eventually. Uh, yes, Alex, I'll take Tulip for 600 This spring flower has a very faint, sweet smell. What is a tulip? You are correct.